Well, hello, and welcome again to the 2012fad.com. I will be your host for the evening, and my name is Charlie Bluehop. Last night, we talked about the joy of hatred and how when you don't have a soul, and uh, at this point in time, I would pretty much bet money, which I, of course, don't have, I would bet money that our masters don't have souls, whether they're from this world or another world, really doesn't matter. But to turn the earth into an open toilet, a sewer, just for the joy of hatred, you really have to have no soul for that. But it's actually what's actually worse than our masters, and there actually is something worse than our masters, it's their servants, what I call the Mandarin class, the Bush family, the Cheney family, the Clinton family, Obama, Ben Bernanke. These are people that I will bet you actually do have souls. And they've traded, well, I don't know, decency for horror. They have chosen of their own free will to embrace the concept of the joy of horror. Whether it's black magic ritual, the worship of Satan, pretending that Satan is uh, Jesus, which is what they do in the United States now. You actually have to belong to this uh, government religion, which claims to be Christianity if you want to hold political office in the United States, if you want to hold office in the military of the United States. And again, you don't need me for this. You can look this up, go on the web, look up uh, state uh, authorized religion, look up uh, military uh, religion, U.S., and you will see that in the U.S. military for a number of years now, unless you join the Christian version, or the American version of the uh, Christian religion, you're drummed out of the military. You're simply forced out. You get no promotion. You're left behind. You're pretty much ignored out of existence. It doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a Buddhist or a Muslim. Unless you join the state-mandated religion, either in political service or military service, you're out. And this has been going on actually for decades. And it's Christianity in the form of Satan worship. Again, doesn't matter if God exists. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if Satan exists. It doesn't matter. Our masters believe they do. And they embrace the concept of the joy of hatred. And so tonight I thought we might chat about gun control equals violence. And this, of course, goes hand in hand with the joy of hatred. Our mothers and fathers 200 years ago knew, they knew from personal experience, from history, which I'm sure they also knew quite a lot about, that if you are armed, it's very, very difficult to turn you into a slave. Nothing frightens rulers of a country. Our masters are no exception. Nothing frightens them more than their slaves being armed. And at the moment of the 300 million Americans 58% of which, as of today, August 1st, 2011, are unemployed, quite a few Americans have guns. And again, I apologize, uh, this episode reads as um, June, let's see, July 6th, 2011. It's actually August 1st, 2011. I'm way behind because uh, in my arrogance, when I started this, I assumed that I would have some sort of corporate funding or sponsorship by now. Of course, I don't. And... Uh, as time passes and it's harder and harder to find money to live on, I, uh, I let these episodes slide. But as of today, August 1st, 2011, 58% of Americans are unemployed. And as there are 300 million Americans, that's, that's a lot of people. But luckily, most Americans are armed. But at this point in time, what we talked about last night, the joy of hatred really has stepped up because what we're talking about tonight, gun control equals violence. I grew up with CIA and U.S. Army Air Corps intelligence, forgive the expression, who were all assets of the CIA. These were street thugs. They were bullies. They were monsters. They were liars. They, they literally believed themselves to be uh, well, princes in a uh, very exclusive little kingdom. And... As time passed, they were quite astonished to discover they were not members of the group. They were simply tools to be used and thrown away. They were the scum of the earth. 
And I'll tell you who was really, really interested in gun control was the scum of the earth. It was the, uh, the criminals, the liars, the thieves, the bullies, the thugs. Because nothing upsets a criminal more than to break into your house with the intent to rob you, rape you, and kill you if you have a gun. Because you might actually shoot them. And a criminal really wants a very easy, very simple life. And so to get a very easy, simple life, you make sure that your victims cannot defend themselves. And that's what gun control really is. Gun control is not to protect us from each other. Gun control is to make us slaves. Because if you're a thug, a bully, a liar, a psycho, all of the creatures I grew up with, including drug addicts and uh, alcoholics, you want to be able to bully and push and thug and beat up and kill and rape anybody you want. But you want to do it on your terms, which means nobody can fight back, nobody can defend themselves, nobody can stand up to you. Those are the preferred targets. And gun control guarantees that you will not be able to defend yourself. Imagine yourself trying to uh, defend your home with a baseball bat against paramilitary guys with automatic weapons and body armor. It's going to be a really short conversation. You're going to be dead. Your wife and your daughters are going to be gang raped and then killed. Your sons will probably be gang raped too. They're sort of non-denominational on that sort of thing. So gun control equals violence is very simple. You take away someone's right to protect themselves, which is guaranteed, by the way, under the Constitution of the United States. You take away somebody's gun, you can walk into the house and you can do anything you want to them. And please don't think for a moment that the mafia is different than the CIA, is different than the FBI, is different than the Jesuit order, is different from the Catholic Church, is different from the U.S. government. All of this is under the thumb of our masters. And I know it sounds like New World Order stuff or conspiracy theories. It's not. Forget about the New World Order. Forget about conspiracy. This is business. That's it. Now, the business happens to relate to the worship of Satan. Doesn't matter if Satan exists. Doesn't matter what you and I think about Satan or God or good or evil. Our masters are convinced that God exists. That's why they're at war with her. That's why they worship Satan. Doesn't matter if Satan exists or not. It doesn't matter. So you need to move beyond that. Our masters believe that Satan exists. They do things for the sheer joy, as we talked about, of hatred. Our masters at this point don't care about money. They care about power. The servants of our masters still care about money because they believe that money leads to power. They're going to be left behind with us when the event, whatever the event turns out to be, is. But I know from personal experience, and I always talk to you only about things that I know personally. I don't talk about UFOs because I've never seen one. I don't talk about little gray aliens, never seen one. Heard stories, I have no doubt they exist. Thank God I've never seen one because I know too much as it is now. I don't talk to you about uh, Comet Elena or whatever it is because I don't know anything about it. The Dead Brown Dwarf Star I have personal experience with because I've met too many CIA current and former agents who talked about it quite freely. I've met too many Army intelligence guys and Navy intelligence guys. If you want real intelligence about the real world, Talk to naval intelligence guys. They're at the very forefront of all the, uh, of all of the information organizations. And they're actually the brightest ones. Needless to say, you won't actually find too many because they know enough not to broadcast their identities. So that's stuff I have experience with, either first or second hand. I have very personal upfront knowledge of gun control issues because I grew up with the lowest form of human life, street thugs. And they work for the CIA. They work for Army Air Corps Intelligence, CIA. They were the scum of the earth. They are the heart and the soul 
of the CIA. And I know for a fact that the only people who really want gun control are the criminals. And these are criminals in public office. There's a very, very ancient law, Roman law. It's called uh, posse comitatus. I think that's how it's pronounced Latin. I barely speak English. But posse comitatus is a law that goes back to Roman times. Basically, it means that a general of an army cannot enter the gates of Rome at the head of his own army. That was what you and I would consider a takeover. And since Roman times, it's been against the law of every Western country that I know of for a general to lead his army into a city and occupy it, especially here in the United States. It's written into the Constitution somewhere that the military is not allowed to be based in cities and it's not allowed to do the work of the police because the police are trained to do one thing. Soldiers are trained to do something completely different. Police are there to protect and to serve the population of that city. The army is trained to kill the enemy. Pretty self-explanatory. So now if you have army trained army troops, military troops, acting as police in your city, guess what? They are not there to protect and to serve. They're not babysitters, which is unfortunately what police are. And I have tremendous respect for real police, but I could not possibly do their job. But imagine, trained military personnel are now acting as police in your city. Police are trained to protect and to serve. Soldiers are trained to kill the enemy. So if you put military forces into your city, how do they view the population of that city? As the enemy. What do you do to the enemy? You kill them. That's it. There is a tremendous movement now in the United States for... The U.S. military, whether they're actually made of U.S. citizens or not, is a topic we've covered before, how the U.S. government has run out of Americans to kill while in uniform. So in order to even more confuse our current problems, foreigners are being offered American citizenship if they serve in the American military. So today, when you look at people in U.S. military uniforms, they're not even Americans. They're from countries from all over the world. And strangely enough, most of those people are from countries where U.S. military in the past what, couple of decades, last couple hundred years, have been in their countries and robbed and raped their countries. So they're looking for revenge for their parents, their grandparents, their sisters, their brothers against Americans. And that's perfectly reasonable. We've been butchering people at uh, the orders of our masters through their corporations for, what, 100 years, 200 years? It's hard to remember anymore. So now you've got trained military personnel in your cities acting as police officers. Military people are trained to kill the enemy. You are the enemy. So imagine now you don't have a gun. And these military people know you don't have a gun. And they've got a bone to pick with you because you're American. They're going to walk into your house. They're going to do anything they want to you. They're going to rob you. They're going to rape you. They're going to rape your sister, your brother, your daughter, your children. They're going to kill your pets. Take everything you own. And if you're lucky, they'll kill you on the way out. If you're not lucky, you'll live. Trust me, life ain't that great at a certain point. So gun control means that you're a slave. They can do anything they want to you. And again, don't confuse the fact that the mafia are the bad guys and the CIA and the FBI are the good guys. They're the same guys. They work for the same people. But you've got to have, you know, how can I say this? You have to have the illusion that there are bad guys and good guys. You pit one against the other. 
In the United States today, there just is, is, is not the case. It's not the case in the United States. Because I grew up with these guys. I saw the handshaking and the palling around with the cops with the mafia. I saw it. I saw the CIA with you, but old U.S. Army Air Corps guys palling around. And these guys were, as they say, connected. A couple of the old uh, U.S. Army Air Corps intelligence guys I knew for many, many years. They were personal friends with multi, multi billionaires. Personal friends. They knew Dwight David Eisenhower on site, president of the United States at the time, when they were, you know, in. So these guys are connected all the way up the line. So when you see a law that says, hey, I want to put gun control in line, some, you know, somebody will get shot, yeah. <laughs> they will. If it, if it was me, uh, I'd buy a gun. I'd buy a thousand rounds of ammunition. I'd find somebody to teach me how to use the thing, how to keep it clean, how to keep it serviced. And the last few years I lived in the United States, I slept with a loaded gun under my pillow because I was pretty much convinced when little King George V got in, the idiot, that there would be armies occupying Los Angeles. Thankfully, there weren't. But there are armies occupying Atlanta, New York, parts of Beverly Hills. And this was back in, what, 2004? Today, you have army units policing Florida and finding people who are legally holding their own weapons to defend themselves, and they're being gunned down in the streets. It's up to you. There is no we, there's no they, there is I. I will make a difference. I will decide to say yes. I will decide to say no. I decided to run because I saw no hope. And unfortunately, I was right. I ran to New Zealand. What a disaster that was for three years. I ran again because I knew there was no hope. There was absolutely, it was very blatant and there was no attempt to conceal it. It's up to you. You have to decide. You have to make the decision. Walk down that road, make your choice which road you're going to, you're to follow. No one's going to do it for you. I guarantee it. Nobody. There's a toast, a blessing, a greeting. In a very old culture, long gone, they gave us our laws from theirs, the Brian laws, B-R-E-H-O-N if you could even find them anymore. They talked about rights and justice and fairness and the equality of everyone under the law, from the king down to the guy who mucked out the stables. Everyone had rights. We've forgotten that. Or we just don't care. But I share it with you. May you live as long as you wish May you love as long as you live. For the 2012fad.com, this is Charlie Blumhoff. The 2012 Fad is brought to you by Coffee and Blood, Love Letters Between the Dead, a series of five erotica horror novels about a fallen angel finding his way back to regain his own soul, and how the CIA war against the human race their black magic captures and traps him in the body of a mind-controlled slave designed to hunt down and to kill their god, their Satan.